Well, since we are smack dab in the middle of the NBA season, and since that's what you and I do for a living, it's time to bring on Blazers assistant coach Jay Triano. He is joining us from Detroit right now. And, uh, Coach, appreciate you checking in. How are you tonight? Doing very well. Thank you. Good. Hey, everything coming up roses for the Blazers right now, and uh, you've won 13 of your last 14 ball games. National pundits, of course, giving the Trail Blazers some crazy love right now. But as fans, it's time to kind of temper some of that enthusiasm just a bit, right? As coaches, do you do that, given the fact that we're only 20 games into the season right now? Yeah, we're we're only a quarter of the way through, and to be honest, I don't know if uh, you know the players or the coaching staff feel like we're playing to the best of our ability yet, which is great because uh, you know we're still finding ways to win games, and I think that's a, that's a a challenge in itself. Uh, but uh, we all believe that we could play a little bit better, and um, you know we hope 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 that can happen on this road trip. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge is gone now for eight straight games of getting 10 or more rebounds. He's just playing at uh, all-star level once again, Jay. Mm -hmm. And um, can you just talk about the level of which he's playing at as you watch him from a coaching standpoint? Well, I think Coach Stott said it earlier uh, this week. You know, he, you know, he's our anchor, you know, and we can give him the basketball and we trust that he's going to make good decisions. Uh, down the stretch last night, he showed that. He scored two buckets in a row and made a good pass out of, adult, or, or out of the low post area. And I think that, uh, you know, you know, LaMarcus is a guy who feels very comfortable when, when he has the ball and where, with where he has the ball right now. And uh, I think he makes all the other players better. When he's not in the game, uh, you know, you know, we have to find different ways to score. But uh, when he's in the game, that you know, you know, there's a there's a sure thing. And I think that all of our players have become comfortable with him. And, and if, you know, they sense that we haven't scored two or three times, then we throw the ball to LaMarcus, and it's almost a calming influence for us. Trailblazers assistant coach Jay Triano joining us from Detroit. Uh, coach, another thing on that L.A. topic. Have you been surprised at the opponent's willingness to kind of bypass in doubling L.A. in a lot of these games? Because clearly that has been the objective of uh, you and your staff trying to get the ball to L.A. when it matters most. Yeah, I think what we've seen is a shift. Uh, you know, earlier on, uh, teams were double teaming him, and he does such a great job of moving the basketball. We share it. We were hitting three points up um, as a result and winning games because of that. And now teams are becoming a little bit more reluctant to double team. They're, they're staying at home on our three point shooters, and Lamarcus has done a very good job of uh, scoring in the low post. And I think that's the you know the way that we've been adapting and the way that Lamarcus has been adapting to the different coverages that he's been he's been. Uh, He's been shown. I think, and I think that's going to continue through the year. I think teams will now recognize that Lamarcus is the one that's hurting them, and they'll start to think about double teaming or maybe digging a little bit deeper. And that's when we're going to get our two point shot going again. And uh, uh, you know, that's just the evolution of a team, and us recognizing what teams are trying to do. Coach, talking about the evolution of a team, I, I want to kind of broaden this conversation a little bit and, and, and ask your opinion. It looks to me like not only are teams not doubling Lamarcus. It looks to me that teams are doubling less in general in the league. I mean, there was a time when people were voluntarily rotating their defenses, believing that they could be more active and more alive. And it seems like now doubling is, is almost becoming a thing that you don't see very much. Yeah, Michael, you're, you're exactly right. And I think a lot of it has to do with the analytics of the game today. Um, people are thinking, you know, the three-point shot and getting to the rim are the two, you know, things that are, are the highest rated analytically for, you know, for your offense. And right now, if you, if you double team, you, you're, you're susceptible to a three-point shot on a swing swing action. Um, so if you can keep a guy individually away from the basket and force him to take contested twos, uh, that's what teams are going to do. So I think, you know, you're, you're exactly right. Teams are, are not double teaming as much as they were in the past. And, um, as a result, they're making teams take contested twos, and analytically, that's what a lot of teams want to do. But you know, it's it's it, you know, it, it's tough when you have such a good player like Lamarcus. I mean, he makes you pay if you if you if you leave him alone in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And he's shown that over the last couple of days. So, as a follow-up to that, coach, it's, and I'm just kind of into this coaching thing right now. I'm fascinated <laughs> by, by, by by this conversation. But now, when teams don't double, then does that change how you script your offense to start games? Because when teams double, you start, you throw it to your top guy, you watch how they play, you read, react, and you work your way through the game from there. Well, if doubling is happening less, happening less, then does that alter how you script your offense in the start of a game? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's part of the scouting reports that we do, you know, as coaches. You know, we try to figure out whether teams are going to double. 
where they're going to double from, if they're going to sit in the nail, if we want to try to flare the guy who's sitting off on the nail, trying to disrupt uh, Lamarcus's rhythm. Um, you know, these are all things that we look at when we're doing scouting reports. And uh, you, you have to go into a game with a, with a plan, knowing, you know, almost anticipating whether a team is going to try a double or whether they're going to let a guy play one-on-one. And, and if they are, you don't want to leave him on an island having to make plays all the time. So sometimes you flare guys off the nail, you flare guys off the off the weak side and see if you can still create that three-point shot uh, so that you're not, you know, solely dependent upon the one-on-one move. Trailblazers assistant coach Jay Triano joining us from Detroit where the Blazers will play the Pistons tomorrow night, uh, leg two of this five-game trip. Coach, success against the East. Portland right now 9-0 and against the Eastern Conference. An opportunity, obviously, to extend that tomorrow against a Pistons team that is, is quite frankly, very, very hungry. Can you talk about – and you saw this a couple weeks ago with Philadelphia who really came out and gave their best effort. You know you're yeah. going to get the Pistons' best effort tomorrow. Yeah, we've, we've got games on this trip against a lot of teams that are, you know, fighting losing streaks. And, and you know, we've got to make sure that, you know, we're the hungrier team. Uh, you know, they, we know that they're going to be hungry. They're looking for victories. And we've got to make sure that we're the hungrier team when we go into these games. See if we can, uh, you know, if we, if, if, we, if we can start off by playing good defense. I think, you know, when a team is struggling, uh, their confidence level is a little bit low. And, and it starts with our defense, and, and our defense has been our key this year. If we can force teams into becoming uncomfortable and taking tough shots, I think that that wears on their confidence even more. And our, we always feel that our offense can flow. We'll, we'll find a way to eventually score in a game. We've got enough talented players. Uh, the key is going to be to make sure that we don't let teams get a rhythm and don't give them any type of confidence or let, let the crowd get into the game where uh, you know when you're playing on the road. You know, Coach, the defense has definitely been been solid and, and noticeably, you know, improved. Not to say that it wasn't good before. But rebounding is a an important part of defense, obviously, wrapping up the possession with a rebound, getting out and running. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the yep. rebounding of this team this year in terms of how improved it is with how many different players. Guards are rebounding better. Damian yep. Lillard's averaging five rebounds a game. Mm-hmm. So my question in all of that is, when you don't practice much this time of year, uh, you know, you just don't get much time and opportunity, how do you consistently improve the way you are rebounding the basketball as a team? Well, I think the one thing is we have to, we watch a lot of videotape, and we know that sometimes our big guys are wrapped up in keeping great offensive rebounders off the glass and we demand our guards to come back and get it. We also like to reward the guards. If you come back and get the rebound, it eliminates an outlet pass, and that creates our flow into the offensive end a little bit better. So I think that encourages our our guards to get back and rebound, knowing that they can just get the rebound and bring the ball to the floor themselves. So I think there's, you know, it's a little bit of a motivation thing. Uh, We always say, you know, all five in. You know, we can't reward a defensive effort until we until we actually secure the ball. So we got to make sure that all five are in. And our big guys do a great job, but sometimes their responsibility is to keep great offensive rebounders off the glass. And that's when our guards have to swoop in and, and you know and help create some some tempo offensively. Jay Triano joining us for just a couple more minutes, Trailblazers assistant coach. And, Coach, I want to go back to the whole east-west kind of thing in the Trailblazers um, and their dominance right now, 9-0, and as I just mentioned a moment ago. Can you kind of pinpoint how and why the West, if you look at the records in the West and you look at them in the East right now, they are completely nearly opposite right now. Is the yeah. East that much further down than the West right now, or is West clearly the power yeah, conference? No. It, is, it is right now. And, you know, and I think the one thing about the NBA that, that makes it unique is that it's cyclical. Um, you know, we've, you know, I was talking to some of the players today when we were on our way to practice here in 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 Detroit and going into going into the the palace at Auburn Hills when uh, you know Rasheed Wallace was there and when Chauncey Phillips and Rip Hamilton were there, man, this was a tough place to play. No doubt. Um, last you know two weeks ago when we were on a road trip back east, Boston with Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, going into the Boston arena, that was a tough place to play. Philadelphia when Allen Iverson was there, that was really tough. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and Larry Brown was coaching, so. It's cyclical. I mean, things switch, uh, whether it's the draft and the, and the number of top picks that, you know, at that time moved to the West and now that are moving back to the East while those young players develop. I'm not sure what it is, but it, it, it changes all the time. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, those were three of the toughest arenas to play in before, and, and now you're going in and you're playing teams with losing records. 
All right. <clears throat> well, tomorrow we wish you guys the best of luck in trying to uh, make it 13 in a row. Uh, losing streak for those Pistons and, of course, the Blazers trying to make it six in a row themselves. Jay Triano joining us from Detroit. Coach, thank you so much. Good luck tomorrow night. Great. My pleasure. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. All right. Jay Triano joining us from somewhere. I was going to say the Palace of Auburn Hills, but that is farther away from the downtown. He's joining us from an undisclosed location. <laughs> <Yeah>, it's top <laughs> secret.